Hello and welcome to this video. In this session I'm going to show you how to create a portfolio using PRTU. Now PRTU function is the main portfolio creation and administration function you should use when creating a portfolio. The main benefits of this function is it can be used to make a backdated portfolio, you can edit in real time, you can go back to certain dates and remove or add certain equities within portfolios. So it's very flexible. The real downside to this function, however, is cash flow management. So if you have like a portfolio mind of a million pounds, then really you need to understand the cash flow and how much you've spent or how much you've received when you close trades or open them. But on this PRTU function, Within here, you'll have a list of previous portfolios if you have any. If not, go to, make sure you're in portfolio on this column, and then press create. And on here, you'll get a number of criteria. So on here, give the portfolio a name. The long name is optional, so you can just leave this blank. Depend on your portfolio, you can have an equity portfolio, a fixed income portfolio, a balanced portfolio is for both equity and fixed income, or you can have a portfolio which contains funds, so likes of ETFs, so a portfolio of funds. For this example, I'm going to stick it and keep it at equity. It will also ask you a currency that this portfolio is going to be based in. You can change that if you need to. The type of position, the share per amount section, is if you say I want to buy 100 shares in X company, you'd select this approach. The fixed weighting sets a nominal value, typically a million pounds, and when you change position, you put an I want 10% of my portfolio in this company. The drifting weighting is similar, but if you were to remove a share, then the weightings for all the other shares change to make sure the portfolio is up to 100%. But again, this example, I'll stay at share per amount. You can pick a benchmark if you like, but at this precise moment, you don't need to because in the port function later, you can change the benchmark. The calendar conversion if you tend to trade in the markets which are tend to be Monday to Friday, so most equity markets are, you just keep it at five days. But if you want to convert it to have the seven day enabled, you can using this feature. The current views down here, these are for the port function later on when you want to analyze the portfolio. I suggest keeping them as they are at the moment, and then when you're in the port function later, we can change the view or edit the view if we need to. Within this creation wizard, there are a number of more advanced features you can use uh, under these tabs. In addition, if you want to give your portfolio a ticker for easy access later on, you can have it here and it will always be the ticker name then index when you search for it in the Bloomberg command line. But when you finish with that, just press create. Now this screen appears and this is where you just start adding stocks. So it's not as user friendly as the idea function, but it's more practical. So to start with, you've got today's date up here. If you want to backdate this, so this portfolio started a year ago, just change the date there, press enter, and then this is, we'll see a rebalance in the portfolio as of a year ago today. Up here is the unique portfolio ID number. Now this could be useful later on if you're going to use the Bloomberg query language to download data into Excel, you'll need to know this ID number. On here, all you need to do is start adding the companies. So let's go ahead. You can add them one by one. I want to buy Tesco's. 
the position I want 100 in Tesco's it will tell you the price as of the price on this date or the last price if it's a overseas transaction it will tell you the foreign exchange rate obviously this is a UK portfolio in pounds therefore it's one and over here it will tell you the market value of this transaction Alternative, alternatively if you didn't buy it at the last price and it was a very volatile day for instance you can change the price in here to say well actually I didn't buy it at that it was actually slightly it was during the day but due to volatility the price I bought that was actually this you could change that there and press enter and at the end it will give you a running total and you just keep doing this for a range of stocks now the benefit of this function is if you want to create a portfolio based on like an equity screen which I'll just create now you can drag and drop so here's an example where I have searched for all the companies on the FTSE 100 which currently have a recommendation consensus of above four, which means buy, and out of these organizations that are recommended as to buy, I want to invest in companies that at least 30% of the board are women. And this is narrowed down to 10 companies, so I'll search for them 10 companies to see the results. And here are the companies that meet my criteria. And all I can do here is I've got these 10 companies. I will use the drag and drop feature on the EQS screen, drag these 10 companies into here, and I'll say merge because I still want to keep Tesco's in there. And to finish this off, I need to change the position for each one to suit my portfolio size. When I've done that, I can just press save. Make sure you always save your portfolio whenever you've made a rebalance. So the flexibility of this function is, okay, that was a year ago. Let's move to the end of the year, just before Christmas. I might wanna make a rebalance here. So you can see I've still got the same stocks here, but for instance, I want to sell some of these companies. So in order to do this, all you need to do is go to them on the list and press delete. And save. Now the trouble with this is I don't know the cash flow. So I know I've just sold two stocks, but I don't know what the profit and loss was using this function or I don't know how much cash I received back. That's why I'd always suggest if you create a portfolio using this function you need to use the Excel or something along that lines to manage the cash flow. But all the performance will be captured in the port function so you don't need to look at this. Another feature of this is we've made two rebalances so far and then if I want to move forward, we can look at adding more stocks as of today, following the same process. We'll save. And then this pencil here will show you the three different rebalances I've done as of a year ago, just before Christmas and today. It always shows you here that I've just done it as of today in this example, but it will also show you when you actually made the change if you can't remember. And if you think, oh, I didn't want to do that rebalance at Christmas, you can go to the X and just delete that rebalance and then it will remove what you did there and it will still have the shares from the first day. So I'm just going to leave not change that. Oh, cancel, click cancel. Within this, you can also export this out into Excel to do the cash flow management by going export. Or if you have another portfolio in PRTU, 
you can go back to a certain date, go actions and go import securities. So you can import maybe from a previous portfolio using portfolio or an equity screening over there. Or if you just want to download the companies from the, a certain index, you can import there. So some of, the, some of these more advanced features are within the toolbar. I hope you found this video useful for creating a portfolio using PRTU.